after today, as you would have seen from the title, we are refurbishing or restoring some parts on my Subaru and parts on the Subaru itself. So today's video, we're going to be filling in and fiberglassing some of the parts on the car that need fixing. Some have holes and some of the car is actually damaged, like for regards in the boot, it's damaged. So we're going to be fixing that today and then there's just going to be a couple other bits like priming and painting some of the car. This isn't going to be painted properly like a professional would do it, but this is just literally for something that we're going to be doing in a future video which you'll see soon so for all of you lot going why are you doing it outside and why are you doing it in a bodgy way it's because it doesn't need to look perfect as it isn't going to look like this for long we're also going to be doing a lot of sanding in today's video as well so we're starting off mostly on everything with a 60 and then we're going to a 120 down to a 240 and then we're going to a 400 and then finally we're going down to a 600 grade of sandpaper in. As you can see we're repairing this bumper right now and we're putting some fiberglass on it. The bumper is actually made out of fiberglass. This is a charge speed Subaru WRX STI bumper. You don't see a lot of these. This is a special Japanese bumper and only a couple are made. You can still find them now and again but they are really hard to find and get. We're using the jam looking paste and reinforcing with fiberglass meshing. This is to strengthen the bumper and give it the OEM look so it matches the rest of the bumper that way you wouldn't be able to tell as much that it's been repaired what you can see on screen now is 24 hours of the fiberglass being set we are now mixing up some body filler this one is u-pole easy sand this is a deep filler and once we're done with a deep filler we'll then move on to a shallow filler which will just finish it off now we've finished mixing it together we're now spreading it onto the bumper Once the filler has hardened, we are now sanding it down with a grade 60 and then we'll work down or up as a 120 and then once we've done 120, we'll go 240, then 400 and then we'll finish it off with a 600. <laughs> So the top is nearly done but for now we are going to move on to the bottom of the bumper we're just going to sand it down because as you can see it's a little bit rough where it's been scraped on the floor because it's so low. We're going to sand it down with the electric sander and then we're going to finish it off by hand with just normal sandpaper. The same grit grades as every other one we've done. <laughs> sanded it down you're going to clean it up and then we're now going to fill it with a deep filler again and then once we've deep filled it we'll put some shallow filler on as well and then sand it <laughs> that is the top and bottom done now for the fiberglassing on the charge speed bumper so now we can get to painting it so we're going to paint it the 48w paint code on the subaru so first of all we're going to prime it and then we'll put the actual paint code on And make sure to clean it off before you start spraying on it otherwise it will get dirt and bits of grit in it and you don't want that. And remember to use a liquid that will degrease it so the paint will stick better. <laughs> So 
the bumper is now fully primed so now we're going to wait for that to dry off and whilst we wait we're now going to do some body work on the car so the first bit of damage is in this back bumper just on the side and it's like where it's worn down or someone's sanding it in the past it's just a black bit of satin that needs sorting out and then we're going to move on to the front which is where we're sanding down all the rust off this isn't a permanent removal but it's not that bad of rust on my car so it should just go straight back to bare metal which is the original metal shell <laughs> We're now cleaning it off ready to be primed and then once we primed that we'll let it dry and then we'll do the same on the other side. <laughs> Now this is a really deep scratch, a kid actually fell off his bike into the car and luckily it didn't dent the car but it did leave a really deep scratch. It went all the way from the back, near onto the front it's not so bad but at the back where you can see where we're sanding it now it was really deep so we had to go right back to the bare metal and then block sand it down and then because the block sander wasn't really working we had to use the electric sander for some of it. And then once we've done that, we just cleaned it off and then just put some primer on it. A lot of painters' eyes right now must be bleeding in pain because of the way we've done this. But we had no garage and the garage it was meant to go to to be repaired actually went bankrupt. So then we didn't have enough time for what we needed it to be ready for. So we just had to do it ourselves and pray for the best. And it didn't actually turn out too bad, which we'll see near on to the end. But this is like the bodgy way of fixing the car. So I don't recommend doing this at home but we had no choice really. <laughs> So because of the massive intercooler I've got on my WRX, I'm going to have to cut all of this off because it will not go underneath the intercooler. I'm going to have to multi-tool it off. So I want to show that before anyone in the comments goes, oh, it's fake because it ain't fake. And now we're going to have to cut it, which is painful, but I want it on the car. So needs matter right now. We've now got to cut out this piece as well, which is the bottom vent there, because my intercooler pipe sticks into it. So we're gonna have to cut a bit out of it as well. was to watch just know it's more painful for me
Now we're gonna chop the top off as well because it's also affecting that top area as well, the intercooler. So we've done that bit there where the pipe's interfering, all of the back of the bottom there. Now we're doing the top. <laughs> piece that we needed to be removed so that the catch actually goes through. So because of the latch it's not shutting down properly so we're gonna have to cut out even more of that. But once that's actually done it should latch down properly. It's because of the carbon bonnet. On the normal Subaru bonnet it might work but because mine's a Sebron one it's not working. But now we've got to cut more out. <laughs> side it's also got paint where it's rubbed back down to the satin so we're now gonna fill that which you can see it's already been filled now and then we sanded it down <laughs> Now that the primer's dry, we are now going to wet sand it and then once we've wet sanded it, sponge it off so it's a bit cleaner and then now we're scotch pad sanding it just to get it ready for paint.
now done a fitment check on the car and it fits perfectly the bumper so now we don't need to mess around cutting it anymore we're just scotch sanding it down and wet sanding it ready for it to be painted once we've sanded it we'll then dry it off and clean it off as you can see now we've cut it so the bonnet latch goes right down and catches properly and it doesn't interfere and it all sits perfectly and now we're just gonna finish the last bits off that need doing and then get to painting it. So I hope you've all enjoyed part one of restoring this Subaru or refurbishing it, whatever you want to call it. This is unfortunately the end of the video. Stay tuned for part two and I'll see you all in the next one. Don't forget to like and subscribe.